Hello and welcome to Bishop Fleming's second restructuring series. I'm Jack Callow, joined by Luke Venner. How are you today, Luke? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very well indeed, thank Good. you. Um, today we're moving on to obligations of directors, mm. uh, specifically in uh, insolvent situations. Um, I think the first question is, when is it when is it relevant? What is near that crucial point around insolvency? Uh, mm. Do you want to go into a little bit more detail? Yeah, yeah. So insolvency, um, it's it's a word that's probably widely known, but maybe not well understood. Um, so insolvency, there are kind of two recognised tests for insolvency. Um, one is the balance sheet. So to put it simply, are the liabilities um, you know, more than assets, including prospective contingent? Um, and then we've got a test around cash flow. So have I got enough uh, cash flow in my company to meet the debts as and when they fall due? Um, they're the you know they're the, the, the straightforward ways of looking at it. But there are lots of other indicators such as you know bouncing checks if if people still pay with checks, um, you know supplier demands that that are you know you, you owe me money, pay me within thirty days. I've not paid them, sort of thing. So there are lots of lots of different tests around insolvency. Um, but it's how the directors react uh, when a company is insolvent, and you know, first of all, understanding whether or not their company is actually insolvent. Okay, so uh, we're not here to scare anybody. I'm sure there's a number of businesses out yeah, there, yeah, absolutely, banks, you know, on, yeah. on growth journeys and, and the like. But it's it's such a useful piece of information. This as to as to what do you do when mm -hmm. you are in this situation. Mm -hmm. So what what are the obligations? Well, I mean, there are there are lots of obligations. Um, the overriding obligations that you've got as, as directors, you've got fiduciary duties to act in the best interest of creditors um, when the when the company's insolvent. So that is is basically saying that you know you've got a company that's insolvent. Your duties are to the creditors, not to the shareholders, effectively. So it's about making sure that everything, you know, all the decisions that you're taking, are in their interest. You're not making the position worse. You, you're hopefully trading it for the better. So you've got to look at the you know on advice. You've got to look at the position in the round and. You know, make sure that you're, you're you're ticking all the right boxes. But I think obligations are very important because once you've got a company that's insolvent, I mean, let's you know, let, let's hope it doesn't go into an insolvency process, and hopefully, with the right advice, you can steer away from that. But if if you do end up in an insolvency process, the actions of the directors during that period um, are going to be very heavily scrutinised by not only the insolvency practitioner, but by also the government who get involved in the investigation in lots of different processes. So it's a bit of a minefield. Um, there's a lot of things to think about, but in a nutshell, it's about you know making sure that everything you do is in the interest of creditors and making sure that you document you know document the decisions that you're taking. That's the that's the overriding point. The shift from shareholders to creditors. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the overriding point, and you know you, you need advice on that because insolvency legislation is like I said, it's, it's a bit of a minefield. Um, but there are some very you know very important things to be wary of. One is around insolvent trading. So if you know you've got an insolvent company, you're continuing to trade the company, you're making that position worse. You know that that deficiency increases. You as a director then are at risk of um, you know, claims being brought against you personally, which can get quite serious and quite expensive. Um, you've got things around creditor preferences. So you've got an insolvent company, and this is very commonplace, and it's the sort of thing that we talk to directors about quite often. This creditor is chasing me for payment. This one's quiet. Am I okay to pay this one? Or you know, I'm, I'm good mates with this this yeah. creditor down the road, sort of thing. Can I can I pay them? And there's a lot of legislation around preferring creditors that you need to be careful of. Um, things like transactions that undervalues. Uh, coming back to a, yeah. a different video that we did around um, you know selling assets, selling businesses. It needs to be done properly. You need to have you know looked at the market, explored all opportunities. Um, so that's you know there are a number of yeah. different pitfalls, but it's about protecting yourself as a director, not you know not because you want to protect the company, but about protecting your own personal position. Because like I said, if you get yourself in hot water, it's it's not so going to be good. So what happens if we are we are in said hot water? Um, you know what what are the consequences on on directors? So what, what what's the uh, what's the things to be aware of and, and be fearful of in yeah. these scenarios? There are kind of two two things really. Um, the first is around disqualification. So in, in many insolvency processes, we as insolvency practitioners, we have to investigate and report on director's conduct, and that can lead to disqualification proceedings. Um, again, that, that's not to you know, unduly scare directors, but it is, it's, a, yeah. it's a reality in, in certain cases. Um, 
the other point is around kind of restitution. So we look at this stuff because it's about trying to, you know, put money back into the company so that we can, you know, pass value back out to creditors where creditors have been kind of prejudiced. So if a director has been involved in a particular transaction, uh, which has been to the detriment of the company and to the detriment of creditors, then we, as insolvency practitioners, we can say, hang on a minute, you've done this, um, you know, what are you going to do about it? You know, a preference, for example, you've preferred a creditor for £100,000, uh, we, we, you know, we can come after the director for that. So again, it's not, this isn't about scaring directors, it's about educating directors to, you know, first of all, take advice when there's a problem, but also be clear about what your obligations are. Because if you do things that, you know, if you fall foul of your obligations, then there's a there's a high chance of you personally, um, you know, landing yourself in a bit of hot water. Yeah, and certainly the directors that you know that I've met over my time, people actually just want to do the right thing. Yeah, and absolutely. Just, yeah, yeah. What am I supposed to do in this situation? It's not it's not a, it's not a problem to ask that question. Um, if there, if any directors are watching, please don't panic. Um, but obviously, please be aware of the of the seriousness of of, of what this video is trying to bring uh, to, to, to the audience. Um, Luke, thank you so much for your input today. No problem. Um, really, really thank insightful. Um, Luke's been Luke. I've been Jack. Thank you for watching. <laughs>